Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be back to school like hacks and just like things that you should know when going back to school in the light of everyone going back to school. So this is going to kind of be like a college edition one because I'm currently in graduate school and these are things that I kind of picked up and learned throughout undergrad and graduate school. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure to bring like a sweatshirt or a jacket or something to put over your clothes because some of these classes are two and a half hours, some are five hours, some are only 50 minutes, but always I've realized that college classrooms are so much colder than everywhere else on campus. When you get in class, it's just freezing in there for whatever reason. So be sure to bring a sweatshirt or a hoodie because um, you just don't want to be stuck in a room for a long period of time freezing. The second thing that you're going to want to do is do not purchase your textbooks right away. I know that can be scary for some people because you don't want to attend class and not have all your materials, but textbooks are something that rarely gets used if ever gets used. Like some classes you're going to read out of your textbook, you're going to do homework out of it or whatever, um, but nine times out of ten you're at least not going to use it the first week of school, like syllabus week when you're going over syllabus and you're getting, getting introduced to the course, you're not going to need your textbooks right away. And usually a professor will let you know during that lecture if you're going to actually use it or not. Some professors are just like, oh, I have these on the syllabus, they're optional, they're not required. So I would definitely consult with your professor and see if you actually need the textbooks or if you have a TA in the class and ask them. Um, but definitely don't buy them from the bookstore. So every college campus has like a bookstore where you can go and purchase like clothes and school merch and, and books so don't buy them from the bookstore and especially don't buy them new because they are extremely expensive most professors don't care where you get the book from if you do need it and they usually don't care if you have a pdf version so this lovely website i use to get free pdfs there's so many websites out there to get your textbooks for free you just copy and paste the title or the isbn number and you now have a textbook for class so going off of not purchasing your textbooks right away and trying to utilize other sources to get your textbooks, utilize your campus resources. So definitely like you might not want to purchase a printer. So a printer isn't a priority over something else. So usually in your school library or if you are an on-campus student worker, you have access to printers. Usually schools let you print for free. Sometimes they give you a certain amount of money on your student ID card and then you can uh, print from there. Some dorm halls have printers. So try to utilize the printers around your school before actually purchasing a printer or going elsewhere to pay to print. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do, uh, kind of going off of the last one, is trying to find an on-campus job. So when you are working on campus versus working off campus, usually your on-campus job tends to work around your student's schedule a lot more than an off-campus job would because when you're hired on campus, you're hired through like federal student uh, work study money. So, you know, the school is like kind of funding you to work there and then you're getting paid. Um, definitely try to get an on-campus job because one, they're going to make sure, you know, if it's finals week and you have a lot of studying to do, usually you'll get off during that week. Or if you have a really big test coming up and you crammed all night, but you have work at 8am and the test is at 2pm, you're you know, boss usually is like, yeah, take, take the night, sleep in and, you know, go to your class fresh and ready to go. Usually they tend to work better with your schedules and it really helps with kind of getting involved. When I went to my undergrad, I worked in the Office of Student Engagement, so I was very involved um, and in the know about what was happening on campus at all times. Okay, the next thing that you're going to want to do is, like I mentioned before, is get involved on campus. So getting involved meaning, you know, joining extracurricular activities, getting involved in Greek life if you're interested in that, um, just attending on-campus activities where you can meet, you know, possible new friends, uh, getting involved also will help you financially because a lot of clubs or organizations might help help you fund your education or fund your textbooks. This could be a really big uh, financial burden lifted off of you by possibly joining clubs that might have more resources because you're in that club. Um, you can also find mentors through these organizations. Every organization that I was a part of in my undergrad, I found friends, I found mentors, I was able to become financially literate through some of them, and overall it was just... Uh, 
a plus because I was able to be social while also uh, gaining friendships out of it and mentors and all of that. So it's very important to get involved, uh, put yourself out there, do stuff that you maybe wouldn't have done in high school. And if you were super involved in high school and now you're going to college and you want to take a step back, that's completely fine. There's a lot of small clubs you can join just for your interest. So if there's major specific clubs, there's also clubs that, you know, you know, might help you with tutoring or with your academics you know if you're like for me for example I was a film major so I joined a filmmaking club but I was also in a club called trio which is for disabled low income or minority students um, so I was able to gain a lot of friends and mentors in that organization so definitely find organizations that will help suit you for school and you know that might help you progress in the future because now you're getting into the professional um, work environment and your professional studies and higher education so it's important to find groups and network with people who have you know the same interests or um, goals as you. So the next five things that I have are just kind of tips when you get to college a lot of people don't follow these but I follow these and I found that it made me a really successful student. So the fifth thing you're going to want to do is try to sit in the front of your lectures. Some lectures that you're going to be a part of especially the general education courses you might have like a hundred plus students in that class and there's no way the professor is going to know who you are and know that you come to class you know there's no way out of a hundred students but the professors usually notice those students who sit in the front or who are always engaged so even if you're not wanting to sit in the front of the class just try to be engaged make eye contact raise your hand introduce yourself to the professor on the first day of school I promise it's gonna set you up in the long run because you know when it comes time to graduate and you, you know need letters of recommendation or you're trying to get into graduate school or you're trying to get a job or whatever gaining those connections early in school are very very important now if you're a slacker and you're not really like caring to meet your professor they're not gonna pick you out out of 100 students if you don't show up to class. But if you want to be noticed and you want to introduce yourself to the professor, sit in the front, make eye contact, introduce yourself, and engage in lecture. Okay, so the next thing might sound like very self-explanatory but show up to class because when you get to college you're no longer going to school for free unless you know you have a certain scholarship that's letting you be there for free which you're very lucky if you do. Um, but just think about now you're paying for your education so every lecture that you miss that's money you're wasting so I remember like me and my friends like factored it and it was like $89 for every class you missed based on like the cost of our tuition and overall like amount of classes we had that semester so just think that if you miss class you're missing out on money like you're paying money for no reason so try to attend class always be there because it is beneficial to your education you know you never know that one class you missed there might have been a surprise test or they may have said whoever attended this lecture um, you don't have to come during finals week or whatever the case may be you're paying to go to college just go um, a lot of classes give you uh, unexcused and excused absences so you know if you're sick you know other things like that especially with COVID and everything definitely don't attend send your professor an email always let them know what's going on um, especially if it's a class that takes attendance because you're going to want them to know that even though I missed class it was for this reason I didn't just miss to miss class Another thing when you are in classes is trying to make friends within the class and not like friends you're going to go out and hang out on the weekend or anything like that if you do great but more so on the lines of like being able to have a study group because a lot of the general education courses that you're taking you may not be too familiar with or even care to learn the subject matter that you're learning in the class but it's important to develop those relationships within the class because you know if there's a test coming up and you really don't understand the material but you have a study group they may may be able to explain it to you in a way the professor or the TA wasn't able to and also you know if you're not able to afford your textbooks for whatever reason and you can't find them online and a, uh, one of your colleagues in the class has a textbook now you're like hey can you take pictures and send me the chapters so I can read them or if your homework is out of the chapter can you take a picture and send it to me um, and kind of going back to utilizing the campus resources, nine times out of 10, your school library has a copy of the textbook your professor is requiring. So if you can't necessarily um, purchase a textbook or find it online, usually there's a copy in your library that you can go find and then just read while you're there. Sometimes they allow you to check it out, sometimes they don't, um, but you can always um, scan it on the printer and print it out in pages. So there's definitely ways to get around 
purchasing purchasing certain things but also if you have classmates and you're like hey can you send me pictures of the of the chapter or can we meet in the library and then I'll read it um, you know while we're studying or whatever so definitely utilizing um, your classmates and trying to get um, familiar with them and being able to uh, give and take from each other um, and then you never know you might have that student in the class in the future and you're like hey we work so well together now you're automatically study buddies so definitely getting to know your colleagues in class is important okay the second to last thing is finding a study space outside of your dorm so your dorm what I did when I was an undergrad was I tried to differentiate the difference between my dorm and then like elsewhere so I didn't want to study or do homework in my dorm because your dorms are so small so it's like that's a place of like relaxation and self-care and you're just to yourself and whatever um, because I found when I tried to do my homework like in my bed like on my computer or at my desk when it was time to go to sleep I had trouble sleeping because I was doing everything in my dorm room and I was like this isn't you know healthy for me so what I would do is I'm like okay Today I'm going to go to the student center and I'm going to get some Starbucks, I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to do homework there. And then, you know, with my study group, we're going to go to the library because our library I think was 24-7 when I was an undergrad. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to um, study for however long I need to study for, tire myself out, go back home, shower, and then I'm in bed ready to sleep. Um, I found that that was very helpful because my sleep schedule was really off when I didn't do that. And when I was studying in my room, I just felt like kind of like depressed because I was like I'm always in this room I'm not really seeing the rest of campus I'm not really knowing anybody so once I started you know meeting the people in class and joining organizations and branching out in the library you just meet people organically through those scenarios so definitely do that and the bonus um hack or thing that you need to make sure you do in college is treating yourself in self-care when you know you ace a test in your science class and you knew that you were studying for for weeks on this test and you were like oh my god you know I got an A I'm so proud of myself do something that makes yourself happy so if that's going to the gym or if that's going and getting Starbucks or if you take yourself out to dinner or you and your friends order takeout and watch a movie whatever the case is treat yourself because we need to give ourselves a lot of grace during this time period because a lot's going on in the world and it's really hard as students to think about, you know, the financial responsibility of being in college. Some of us are first generation and don't have a lot of support. You're coming into college blind and not knowing what you're, you're going to need from yourself and others are going to need from you. So treat yourself and give yourself self-care. You know, it's like, hey, I did good this week. I studied. I'm going to go to this party or I'm going to go hang out with my friends or I'm going to take a trip with my friends during spring break or winter break or whatever the case is you know look forward to those treats because otherwise if you're just working 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 and there's no pleasure then it's just it's like what are you working for what are you working towards you know don't feel ashamed to go out and shop or go thrifting or do whatever it can whatever is going to make you happy because you worked really hard this quarter or this semester and you're uh Celebrating the little wins is basically what I'm trying to say. Celebrate those little wins and, you know, pat yourself on the back and just tell yourself that, you know, you're doing a great job and school is tough, but we're all getting through it together. So those are my student hacks and tricks that I did while I was in undergrad and I'm currently in graduate school. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below and I will be coming back pretty soon with some more videos. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.